Good morning, North Point family. Hope you are having a wonderful winter break so far. I hope that your Christmas and your New Year's with your family and loved ones was just fantastic this year. That you were just able to just take a load off and enjoy yourselves. And uh, my name is Nick Backlund. I am a junior at North Point this year. And Aaron Colago reached out to me. He's like, Humble Fox. We were just thinking of people do devotionals to encourage you guys. And we were wondering if you would love to do a devotional uh, in the beginning of January. And I'm like, you know what, Aaron? I would love to do that for you. No problem. Sure thing. So here I am. It's a privilege to be here with you this morning. And... They asked me to just share a little bit of God's faithfulness to you and just encourage you with that. And what I was thinking this morning was, I want to go to Matthew 6. Because in Matthew 6, it talks about seeking the kingdom of God. And I don't know if you're watching this today and, you know, maybe you're just feeling a little worried and you're feeling a little down and you're just not at peace with yourself this morning. You're just very discouraged. Well, I want to tell you this. In Matthew 6, Jesus is talking to his disciples. He's Because the disciples were just full of anxiety and they weren't sure if God was going to provide if they left their families to go with Jesus. And they were just worried about a whole bunch of things. So Jesus tells them this. Don't worry about that. If God created you, fearfully and wonderfully created you, why would he leave? Why would he not look after you? And so Jesus, at the, at the end of Matthew 6, there's this one verse that is so foundational, I believe. I believe it's a foundational truth. And the verse goes like this. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all of these things will be added on to you. Now, I'm not sure if you know this, but this is a twofold revelation that Jesus is declaring to his disciples. The first part of that is relationship with the Father. Jesus Christ, God desires to be close with us. And I don't think there's a better way to start this year out but getting close with Jesus. Because when you're close to Jesus, everything just falls into place. Maybe you don't have peace right now, but you get close with God. You'll find peace that passes all understanding. When you get close to Jesus, you desire just to be close with him. You desire to just, you just find joy in his presence. So when you're in relationship with the Father, all the worries you had, all the worries, they, they just vanish. Because the only one thing in your mind is just Him and you. That's what a relationship with God is. You throw away everything that's distracting. You throw away the things that are bothersome to you. And trust me, there are some things that won't go away. But you know what? With Jesus, you used to go through obstacles. And now you go for those and you, and you were challenged then. You are challenged before when you went through those obstacles but now you go through those same obstacles you go through them like it's a breeze like you are the best captain on lake superior in november that is how god works and i just think that's so encouraging that when we get close to god when we get close to know jesus personally everything just falls into place and i just want to tell you another part of that matthew six thirty three. The second part of that revelation promise that Jesus declares to his disciples is the promise that he will care for you and he will be that your provider. Now, isn't it a good, wonderful thing that we don't have to go through life alone? Maybe you're here this morning, you feel like you're just so alone and no one's with you and that's what's discouraging to you. Well, let me tell you this. In the end of Matthew, before Jesus leaves, he, you know, he declares the, um, maybe not declares, but he tells his disciples he's going to leave, but he tells them this. I will be with you till the end of the ages. 
That's such a comfort to know that he did not leave us. He didn't leave us. You know, when you walk through the valleys and the hills and the mountains and the high seas and you're in a tiny boat and you're like, Lord, help me. Jesus is with you every step of the way. So if you are discouraged this morning, I want to encourage you that when you walk through the tough places in life, and I just want to say 2020 wasn't, the, wasn't what we expected. But you know what? Through much of the opposition, there was opportunity. You, there was much opportunity to get close with God. Opportunity for growth. I believe that is a Brian Lidbeck saying or J.P. Dorsey saying. There is an opportunity for growth. And I believe 2020 was an opportunity for all of us to grow in our faith. And to be challenged. And you know what? 2020 had a lot of those. But you want to know what I look forward to in 2021? To see the fruit. When there is opposition... There was blessing that just comes. It's kind of like when um, I think about it this way. is um, I read a book once and they're talking about the plant process of where you bury a seed in the dirt and it's covered in the darkness. Well, if you think about this, when you're in the darkness, you start to, you start to peel away. You start to find out things about yourself. And, and through time, you start to grow in the darkness and then you pop out into the light and you start to see fruit that it produces. And I believe 2020 was like that. We were all seeds in the dirt and God was just keeping us in this dark place or watering us, having us germinate is probably a better way to put it. So that we would pop up in 2021 as fruit that is growing into this big vine and we're going to it's going to produce something. I believe that 2020 was a setup to produce something in 2021. I believe that. And I just want to encourage you this morning, especially the freshmen, because I remember when I was a freshman and I was just ready just to give up. I came home and my mom, I just I was telling my mother and I was like, Mom, I don't think Bible college was for me. I didn't have the grades. I wasn't spiritually good with Jesus then. I'm a little bit better now, but <laughs> just saying. And I was just telling you, you know, I think I'm going to quit and go to McDonald's. But you know what she said? You're not quitting. Because I have never seen you happier, my son. When we cannot see it, when we cannot see the fruit that God is producing in our lives, but others can, I just want to encourage you to keep going. I want you to keep going through everything that's going on. And I just want to end with that. Now, I hope this has blessed you to some extent. I pray that you will just think about these things and as you go about your day. And I just want to thank you for watching this. And I'm looking forward to spending the whole next semester with you. God bless you this morning. I'm praying for you. I believe God will bless your day today. Have a good one.